Welcome, Miko, to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Tours of Fact, this new album, Postpartum Ecstasy, and more things related to, to the metal world in general. So we started with a common question, I think, with all along through that you did perhaps in the few in the few weeks or months. Why did why did the band take almost 20 years to release a new album? And the pandemic has perhaps had to do to accelerate the composition process to, to record and compose this new album because many musicians in the world have more time to compose and record a new album. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, it was basically, you know, back when, after this uh, first album and uh, some live shows in 2007, 2008 and 2009, we played live. After that, yeah, band completely stopped uh, being active because I had so much other things in life, you know, so much. And my interest was uh, in, you know, family life and my work life, everything, stuff like that, basic things. And I just, you know, I, 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 I just, I, I, I had I had no interest in making music. I was all the time listening to music and you know thinking about maybe one day we come back. But but there is no you know I I just lost the interest back then and that's why we had the, okay twenty years is quite a long you know break but. Um, what can I say about it? <laughs> it's like, now we're back. There is no, uh, the pandemic, actually the pandemic didn't really give any, anything to it, why we came back. It was just Jarko, actually Jarko contacted me already back in, uh, it's, it's some years ago, yeah. Jarko contacted me and asked if I wanted to do a, a second album. Uh, and I was kind of interested, but back back then, when my life still was, it was so hectic and I had, I had so much other things still going on. But I was like, yeah, it, it started to feel like it's maybe happening. And then a few other things happened, you know, in my life that that really made me think about, yeah, now is the now is just perfect time to do it because I I uh, I I had nothing else, nothing important at all, you know, and I I just felt like now now I'm I have a a chance to concentrate on uh, writing stuff and making the album happen. So, so that's why, you know, we are. So here we are. So here we are. And now that the album is it's done and and uh, soon to be released. So we are just waiting, maybe. What what is it? It's a uh, little bit over a month. Next month it will come out. So uh, that's it. That's it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But well, twenty years, twenty years break from this band. It's it's yeah, twenty years is a long time. I know, but um, I kind of came back myself uh, back in. 2017, 18, when I had the band, band called Torso, we just did a three song demo back in nine, uh, 2019. Um, so it was kind of my, my personal comeback to making music back then. And around that time, Jarko also contacted me about this Torso fuck thing. And that's that's basically when when it started this comeback thing in 2018, 2019, around that time, uh, we started considering it, and 
and I'm I I'm not you know I, I'm not no, known for being the fastest guy making anything happen usually so so it took a few years after Jarko contacted me to really get me back to studio and make it happen but like I said here we are and it's it's done now finally yeah and the second album actually as you you maybe know m many people know that we were supposed to have the second album back in 2007 on on uh, Gorkiastic Records also which released the first album uh, but that that second album never happened. We we didn't get it done uh, for re many reasons actually, and and that was the time back in it was two thousand seven. That's when I lost the interest to make new album and all back then, and which lead us to this twenty almost twenty years of silence with Torsofuck. Hmm. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So well, now speaking of the history of the band, well, a little of the history of the band, according to the information I've loaded on the internet about Charles of Back, you are a band that started it, it's one well, your activities in 19, 1995, according to the some yeah. information. So what were the main reasons for the band to take almost 10 years to present their, their first album, Erotic Diarrhea Fantasy? Yeah. Oh yeah, 1995. I was just uh, on my early teen teen age back then, and uh, I just had like I was into death metal already back then, very much, and I I I, I liked all all the secret stuff and most brutal stuff like. Uh, Cannibal Corpse and uh, Autopsy and bands like that, which kind of influenced me to that. I, I I would like to have my own band also, but uh, I I didn't have any talent. I didn't have anything. I just knew I want to make something happen, and and so I came up with this band name by reading those. Those uh, my favorite bands, lyrics, you know, and and watching gore films and stuff like that. I came up with the band name Torso Fuck, but and the idea of making as as sick and brutal stuff I could make, but like I said, no, no talent at all. So we back then we did start or i was playing in a few other bands uh with my friends uh and it, they all all of them were like death metal or grindcore i played drums and bass and stuff like that so i i started to uh little bit know how to play instruments and then uh, then uh Around those same times, 96, 97, and late 90s, 99, uh, I did record some some kind of like demo demo stuff with Torsovac also. But Torsovac was, back then, it was kind of like side pro project because I was in uh, another band and, you know, getting, uh, getting how to play drums, getting how to play bass and uh, learning uh, some guitar work so I could make this uh, Taurus of Fuck project of mine like my main band and uh, so basically it took from 1995 to year 2000 so five years uh, and in 2000 I I kind of like I found the the, the style of what what was the style of Doors of Fuck? And uh, earlier, I was uh, Jarko and me. We were playing together in uh, another bands, 
and and he had his his own side project called Pass, and he made this uh, a de demo uh, back in two thousand uh, cases of death, and he programmed drums uh, to that demo. And uh, when I heard that, it was like uh, it struck me that okay, this guy can also program drums, so maybe maybe it would be best for Torsofak also to have programmed drums. And since I also always loved Mortician and uh, other you know, bands with drum, drum machine, so I kind of drew influence from them as well. And back in 2000, I came up with the, with the style, uh, writing style of Torsofak, what it is like today. And we had Yarko doing the drum, drum machine uh, programming uh, for it. And so, so we came up with the um, first release, first real Torsofak release, I would call it, call it like that. The split album with Lympathic Plague. And it was released in 2001. And uh, then, 2002-2003 after the split was a little bit uh, promoted to United States and stuff like that Gorgiastic Records contacted me about the record deal for a full-length album because they have heard the split and liked, liked the material and we agreed and that's when we started to uh, write the full album Erotic Diary of Fantasy back in I started to write it maybe maybe 2003 and it, it got released in 2004 so first five years of Taurus of Fuck were just learning how to basically learning how to play and getting into this all music things playing music and stuff like that it's and since i'm very lazy i'm 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 quite lazy and i i don't really practice so often so so i it do it just took time it, it seems like everything with me it, took, it it will take time i would say like it like that so that's why first five years went practicing and then, then we find the true style and 2001 was the split album and then 2004 came the first full length album. Yeah. Mm. Wow. A lot of history happened to release the, your first album. Nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Nice to hear, nice to hear. So, one detail that always caught my attention about Turs of Fact is that it's a band that was born in the 90s and occurs in, and in Finland, a country that's, that has leader, that has leader or no expressions of brutal death metal or with the bane of mortician did in the 90s from the US. So, I mean, I think to this day, you are one of the few bands in Europe during those years in the 90s or the beginning 2000s that has that influence of horror movies and intros and a lot of gore, gore ideas I, because I yeah. mean uh, yeah all that time so how into this aspect how this how is this desire to have this inclination from brutal death metal born in a country with where black metal and that metal have their personal sound until today yeah, it's yeah. You are right about that. It's like fin Finnish Finnish death metal has it's it's pretty much different than what we do. Yeah, and we don't really sound like Finnish band or anything. I know that, and it's just that's just how I even that's how I want it because I have never been myself in <clears throat> into any. I have never really been into Finnish death metal style or stuff like that. I mean, 
there are many great Finnish bands and great Finnish death metal releases and they are like but always when I was young young guy and and coming you know finding bands finding stuff like that it was like I I found bands from United States and stuff like that uh so it I was always looking for more extreme and more brutal stuff since my early days early years uh in death metal and i i didn't find it from fin finnish bands really anything that would satisfy me uh that's why i when i heard like cannibal corpse and and bands like that from from united states they they were i was like this is this is the real deal and I really enjoyed that, and uh, when I heard M Mortisan in mid '90s uh, and Wicked Innocence and uh, bands like that, brutal stuff, real brutal stuff, and sick stuff. That's what I liked, and that's 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 always been my influences. I I, I never draw influences from Finnish death metal scene or Finnish bands really, uh, but I, I I respect Finnish death metal scene. It's it's a huge thing uh, and very well known in all over the world. So so that's great. But I just I have always done my own thing always, and I I have never been involved in the Finnish uh, you know death metal scene scene or anything i just do my own thing and do it how i like it and me and yarko we do it or in our style yarko also he's he's yarko was really away from death metal for all that 20 years he's been a rock rock and uh punk rock musician and stuff like that so we have we have no connections really to finnish death metal other finnish death metal bands so to say of course, I know a few, few, few of them, and uh, I, I know some guys here. But, uh, but, but we are mostly influenced by rural bands from USA. I would say like that, mostly. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what I like, and that's how we sound. Then you know, that's that's just that's Taurus of fuck, and yeah. There, are, I think there are some European brutal death metal bands, and I know there is, of course, in uh, from early two thousands and from different European countries, but uh, not not really many of many uh, many of them. They, I, I just don't, I, I just don't really know them. I, I, I'm really into American and and. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, from uh, many brutal bands from from uh, uh, so so South America, very brutal bands also, and I like that stuff. You know, all all kind of different parts of America and South America. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. where I draw influences to Doors of Fuck, mostly. Great. great, great, great to know. So talking about from the first album, I remember when Erotic Diarrhea Fantasy came out in 2004, mm, because yeah. it was an album into the extreme death metal community that curious, that was poorly and well received in talking about the, re the review, so both sides. So, but the curious thing about that, this album, is that now... Now, for uh, for uh, for now, for the people from this generation, is considered a jewel with into the style, and even this erotic diarrhea fantasy was reissued a few more times by the German German label, Mexican label, and American labels in CD, vinyl, tape, etc., etc. So now, uh, uh, with 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 one with more than twenty years, what well, twenty years from this new album, how do you see this impact after twenty years? 
of an album that initially had good and bad reviews. And by the way, I, I'm loved that album since the first day to came out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I really appreciate it. I, I appreciate that. So, yeah, it's it's been actually it's been released three three separate times on CD. Uh, first by Gorgias the Records, then Alarma Records from Mexico did the uh, race, uh, and uh, then uh, Morbid Generation Records, which is which is our label now, uh, released the European CD version, uh, and uh, it seems like I. It's it's quite it's it all feels kind of funny to me how how kind of like big thing the, that album is in underground and uh, how how many people have during the years during these twenty years almost how many people have contacted me and how many people likes it it's. It's just amazing, you know. I it I can't even tell how I don't know. It's <laughs> it it feels sometimes it feels like unreal that people like stuff like this so much. It's it's I don't know what makes it so uh maybe but but what's the what what was the question actually? Sorry man, sorry. I, I lost it. Okay, okay, so but, so um how do you see the impact after 20 years of an album that has well that initially had good and bad reviews no yeah and there was also yeah like you say there was also bad re re uh, reviews uh, about the album some some people some death metal fans really don't like the intro stuff or you know be, many people don't understand why why that kind of uh, vocal styles or anything like that? But um, I have I, I I don't care about anything actually. I just always I just like I said I feel I, I feel real amazed how many people like it because I was I was quite sure when I we were recording it and releasing it that that. Not so many people like it, maybe, or something, because whatever reason, I, I didn't even think about it. I always, when I I write and make music, I I really do it for myself mostly, uh, because I this is the type of music I want to hear and listen and stuff like that. So that's why I make this stuff, and I'm a fan of this band myself. I would say that maybe. Maybe, but uh, um, also bad yeah, reviews. But I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't care about it. Someone dislikes us or hates us. That's cool. That's cool. I. It's really cool. Uh, it's just that now we, when we now are putting out the new album and when we release the information that we are coming back. Uh, it's it's kind of look like um, uh, so many people contacted me soon after that and uh, like uh, give us likes. Uh, I even we even had uh, Instagram for a while and uh, but I deleted it because Instagram is not for us. I I think so. It's I want to keep it. I want to keep it as underground as possible. I just just. I don't. I don't feel like Torsofak is uh, so much social media Best. thing or band or anything. I don't. That's why uh, we don't have an Instagram in, at all. We just have Facebook, yeah. But uh, even that short period of time, we had Instagram. There was like so many people liking us and sending a lot of messages and questions about this and that and everything because we are now back and new album is coming so the impact of first album seems to be in underground level it's it's quite big like everywhere and 
but um, I don't like I said I don't really I don't I don't I don't I don't really care about anything I just care about putting out music what I like really I love it and I I like to play this stuff and it's everything is done with heart you know and love to this this death metal and gore stuff and gore grind and brutal death metal so people's opinions really don't matter to me at all i would say really not at all but uh, it's 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 great to see there is a lot of people liking us and it's also great to see many people uh, hate us actually and dislikes us it's also as equally great to see i i wouldn't even like it's not music this is not for everyone this is not for everyone this stuff is for the uh, sickest and most brutal guys and girls out there so that's those are the opinions i i probably i maybe care about if if even them i i don't know i don't I don't know, but uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe that gave some kind of answer to you. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when when Necrobert, Necroper, Necropervert came out as a, the first single from this new Tours of Back album, many people like me were, were, were happy in the comments on YouTube uh on on the song song i i saw a lot of good review i, I got to good opinions about this new song but there were those there were there were not happy because it seems that they they had never heard those of fact from more more than 20 years ago so what is your position in front of these comments that don't have much an analysis of the band's sound because this idea of having having horror movies intros has all was always around the source of fact sound it's not the first yes. time yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't really care, man. I, I just don't care about those. They, are, they are, they don't know anything. It's that's how that that's how it goes. That's how it goes. You put something out, and it's, you know, I, I think that song is. I, I like that song myself, and I like the intros, and I like like everything. Some don't like it, and and it it really seems that many 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 of those people they they don't really know about. Them. I mean, it's it's I I didn't do this album for those people. They are they shouldn't be listening to us at all, actually, because they are whining about long intros or. Or whatever, whatever. We Torso Fuck will Torso Fuck is a band with horror movie intros, gore movie intros. It will always have if if we will make a new Torso Fuck album, of course it will have intros because that's that's our thing. It's just it's just how it is. Many people have I mean many bands have intros. Of course Mortician is is the leading band of horror movie intros and of course Mortician is is the biggest probably it's the biggest death metal band with horror movie intros and first one uh, and and I I, I I always been a fan of Mortician and of course I draw influence to use some kind of intros from horror or gore movies and the influence comes from partly from what Mortician did, but it's like with Torso Fuck, we we use kind of different intros. Also, we I mean we use on this new album we have intros more from 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 real extreme underground torture or gore movies with it's not so much maybe about horror or stuff like that which Mortician have but anyways 
if someone doesn't like the intros, I don't give a shit at all. It's it's just they don't have to listen to us. <laughs> I it's I don't I mean stay away stay away from us definitely stay away from torso fuck because that's what we do. I can I can make music with some other other uh, I I I have I might have some other side projects or bands and uh, I can make death metal with no intros with those bands but Torso Fuck will have intros and it's like it's our thing just like the cover artworks and stuff like that which is, we we use kind of like uh, real pictures always probably in our releases and that will not change i think also the intros will not change so if there is someone watching this and whining about the intros then i i just say to you that do not buy the album and don't listen to it or something like that because i really really don't care at all no mm. Yeah, that's true. That's one of us. I, I don't care too because I really like it. I hear completely this new album and I and I love it. So well, speaking of these of these issues, of these issues that you said of introductions of horror movies, um as a curious matter, it is strange that almost all the all those all, all like you musicians or fans like me of this musical style are always related to this type of underground movies. Uh, into the world of horror because a lot we we love the movies from the from Italy from the seventeenth eighties <laughs> from US etc yeah. etc. Et so how do you yeah. see this this detail of the bands and fans who have this penchant for or or, or this inclination for that seventies and eighties war horror movies? Do you think the we have something wrong in our heads? To lean towards blood and trails, <laughs> guts. <laughs> yeah, it's. I. I think it's like you said. It's. It's definitely like death metal and brutal music. It's. It really goes hand in hand with horror and gore and and uh, there's definitely not. Uh, I would say there is nothing wrong with us because that's <laughs> just. That's just that's that's fun. That's 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 fucking fun, you know. It's like horror and gore and brutal music and death metal, everything. It's it's so much fun. It's so so not it's great. It's I feel good when I listen to the uh, great brutal new death metal albums or demo tapes or whatever, and I see I, I watch horror and gore movies every day. Every 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 day I watch with my wife. We watch stuff. We have like tons of them, and we watch every day, every night. I I, I might watch like two three movies. Not always horror, also violent action movies or whatever. But always something like doing with violence and gore and horror. And I always listen only death metal and. Go- brutal brutal death metal always every day it's it's like my thing and it's fun i feel good with in 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 this lifestyle and this this everything this so you know, it's it can't be it can't be bad <laughs> it can't be wrong you know it's i don't know of course for i also understand some kind of like what do you say like nor- normal people or whatever who doesn't or doesn't understand this whole thing it, it might seem like it's like we are uh, psychos or whatever but that's that's also something I, 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 I don't care about I really don't care about it, what, what anyone thinks about me so to say I because uh, just me, just like you, you know who you are and what you are, and if you, I mean you, you, it's that's the most important thing. You know what you are, what you. So what some uh, ignorant people 
who have no idea what what's what's our, our, about our interests and our music or our uh, mu- movies that that's just they can kind of like fuck off i you know <laughs> it's they can we we should not mind about them at all you know but but uh whatever whatever yeah 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 um, speaking of those people who expect a different sound in this postpartum ecstasy, according when well, according to you, YouTube comments, as I said, of the first single that you released a few weeks ago. So, mm-hmm. how you will define the sound of this new album compared to the first one? What and why do do you think there's there is a certain idea of the fan that expects? That that they expect bands of to change direction of their music because always the fans expect something different, perhaps from the first album. Yeah, yes, uh, it's. I think that uh, this new album it it has much. First of all, it has much better sound. It's really it's like really heavy and really. Uh, Jarko did an amazing job with with this sound thing. He he recorded, um, uh, we recorded uh, uh, drums and vocals at his home, and uh, we recorded guitars and bass at their uh, uh, practice studio. And and Jarko did like he he really nailed it this time. You can you can. You can hear from this second album that he has been, what he has been doing for the past 20 years. He, he's been working with uh, recording uh, some bands, different bands and doing all that stuff. And uh, he really knew this time what we were looking for. Uh, and I, I personally think that the sound is much better than why, what I was expecting for the, it to be. Of course, um, uh, first of all, we we spent like four days recording the album, and it took a couple of months to uh, mix and and finally mastering it. Uh, and this album was mastered by Floor Corpse from uh, Netherlands. I just don't remember his studio name at the moment, but uh, but many people know this uh, guy, uh, Floor Corpse, and he uh, as well. They, him and Yarko, they together they may they really nailed it. Uh, I I when I heard the final version of uh, mixes and mastering, I was kind of like blown away myself. I I really like it like the sound it's much thicker and it's heavier than the first album and it's like a step up from sound wise from from really uh not that i personally i was i i don't even know what i was kind of like expecting i i would i i just went to record a new album and and what came out of it sounds much better what i really even would have hoped for and um, sp- uh, speaking about uh, songs itself I mean uh, I wrote the songs uh, and I think the album overall it's 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 kind of heavier uh, it's it has more of that groove and mid-tempo parts than and the first album, it's it's maybe it's not as much fast than the first album, but it's it it, ha- it does like you you have heard the album. It's it does have a blast beat and stuff like that, also quite a lot. But uh, there are there is a lot more that that heavy heavy stuff and heavy parts and and uh, that that was actually how the back in 2007 when we were about to re- record the uh, second album back then, which never happened. Uh, the, that album all was going to be more of 
towards the kind of like old school. It had more influences from old school death metal. Uh, and this uh, postpartum ecstasy album now, it it, it has few few songs, almost few completely songs from uh, that to- time also. So, uh, and also added uh, a new new tracks. So together they make this. It's 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 all the songs are. I think they, it's it's heavier. It's much heavier and uh, and uh, it has a lot of groove to it. So, and it's it's like I don't know what to say. It's it's just heavier. It's heavier and. It's to me. It's like uh, it, it really is a step up from the first album. That's and and that's the reason why I wanted to, it to be more heavy and uh, it, not so much blast beat. Was the reason that I, I we didn't want to make the same album again you know, or same same style because it's easy to this kind of music. It's so many bands they make so many releases in so so small of time period and what happens then it's like so many albums and releases they sound sound almost the same or stuff like that and it was like i think this album sounds like Taurus of Fuck and 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 it is Taurus of Fuck album and it is a Taurus of Fuck follow up to erotic diary of fantasy but it's it's um, it's still a di- little bit different. It's it has uh, different uh, things to it and different sound and different many different things. But it's still I can hear it stores of fuck myself. So 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 yeah, that's that's how it is. Hey, I I can hear you. I... We are we are twenty we are twenty years after your first album, as you said. We, you you I said. So where things remain intact because you and Jarko are still the same members from the first time. You are use uh drum programming for this new album. You you try to do like this. You try to same the man intact the same feeling that you got from your first album to now. So, in mm-hmm. into this aspect, what why do you both decide to have the same idea? To record just both of you this new album and did you ever think of having a drum a real drummer for this new one in some point to man when you are starting to compose this new album well it back uh yes it's like i don't know it's like torso fuck really came alive with uh drum drum machine back in early 2000s when we made the uh, split album with Lympathic Plegm and that's kind of like like I said it's 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 what that is what Torso Fuck is it's it's it drum machine just it belongs to this band I know I I kind of like understand the idea of of some people hoping if they wish we had a real drummer and we will play, but it's it's just not. We didn't even consider that. We didn't even consider that. We just it, it's we don't want we don't like to be around with too many people and uh, being a like band with drummer and all these four or five different members. It's uh, it's it's so much hassle. We we just we are not that kind of people. We we like to just work work together. Just two of us. We kind of like work it out, and that's how we we get this band going. It's just a part of. It's just part of this this band. We, drum drum machine just belongs to this band, and. I have other bands, other releases might come out with uh, with real real drummer and stuff like that. But but in Torso Fuck, 
record recordings we will probably always use drum machine and since i mean yarko really does great job with that as well he he can really program them really well and make them sound to my ear at least they sound really good and and uh, that's that's i really don't know what what more to say to it because that's just that's just so huge part part of this this band and Torso fuck and yes I see people complaining people are complaining about that but what the hell I mean don't listen to us then I if 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 it sounds bad or stupid to you or I mean why why do someone they, they just shouldn't listen to us they because and if they come to see us live, we we are now going to play some few live shows this year. Also, Terry will have yes, we will have a, a real life drummer and uh, all the band. But uh, on albums and recordings, whatever we we will always use the machine. That's 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 quite quite possible. Just like just like uh, some. Uh, Actually, many many bands do that, and Mortician is yes, Mortician is one of them. They will if they make a new album. I'm pre- I'm quite sure it's gonna be with the drum drum machine also. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't care about what anyone else wants. Drum machine, me and Yarko. That's that's our band. Mm, great. Right, when well, I, I mean, as I said, I, I, I completely listen to this new album, and I didn't know what that is the, the same feeling from the 2004 to now. So I really love. I hope I well, I hope I hope Morbid Morbid Generation uh, do the pre-order soon to come to buy it because I really like it. So, um, yes, we are very closer to end this interview, Miko, and for that reason, okay. what are the future plans that the, that the Plan that the band has for this new 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 comeback because uh, we are waiting for <laughs> 20 years for a new record so perhaps you yeah. are preparing nasty videos because now are more possible with the whether the, with the artificial intelligence is not possible to do more nasty videos or per, to promote this new album perhaps you with this new comeback you have a lot of proposals to do a european tour or perhaps american tour or who knows in the near future perhaps in new next year or the next couple of years a latin american tour who knows yeah uh, actually there is there has been uh, there has after the after we now uh, put out the information that we we came back uh, soon after and and we are having the new album soon after that at least two different persons contact me about uh, Latin American tour <laughs> and also uh, European tour actually yes and stuff like that but we we still have to say like no to tours at this point we can we can at this moment we can all only now we can now put the new album out first which is next month and it actually it will be pre uh, on pre-order real soon real soon like uh, probably this weekend it will go to pre-order on uh, morbid generation records bandcamp and also in uh, torso fox on bandcamp people can pre-order it like in few days now and we put it like out now and first and we have next summer we will have uh, some uh, some uh, single uh, single live shows few of them and no touring at this moment but uh, because uh, all of us uh, are uh, we have so much other things in life than we can do tours at at like this year or but pro, so I really hope we can do some touring also uh, in in future like in like you said in uh, 
in the scale of few years, probably it can happen. But uh, we we need to take uh, one step at a time now, and I'm just happy we are back. And now making, I'm really, really happy to be back and making this band again and doing new records and stuff like that and making some live, live stuff. But uh, we shall see what happens, really. I, I, I hope, uh, and, but everything looks really, really positive in all aspects. So whatever can happen and uh, we really are back now. So we are making this stuff and stuff is going to happen now, really. And uh, about the nasty videos, yeah, I, that would be a great idea. And I actually had um, one, one underground gore movie director was really uh, actually asking me about if he could make a uh, like music video for uh, for uh, this some song of this new album and uh, mm -hmm. we are kind of like working working on that thing right now so we shall see what happens on that as well so a lot of things is coming up quite soon but first, but first we we now uh, well, now we need to get that album out that's mm. that's the main main thing now and getting it to all the, to the hands of all sick and brutal people around the world mm. and we okay. go from there yes great great well great to know about the latin the bueno the, probably a latin american tour in the next perhaps in this year or no perhaps this yeah, year or next year that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> great, great news, great news. Well, Nico, the sad yes. times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoy this interview like me. Perhaps congratulations yes. on this new album. It's a great one. As I said, I, I'm, I'm expecting to do my pre-order in a few weeks. As you, well, in a few days, you told me. Yes, so yes. perhaps do you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalevium followers? Yeah, well... First of all, you guys up there, you, there is the most brutal and sick people around the world is in Latin America and some of the most brutal bands. And, uh, you know, so many people from, uh, from uh, many different countries from around that uh, area or part of the world has contacted me, yes. And uh, I have a lot of friends, friends there, so... It's like uh, you guys really, really are some of the biggest supporters of of this kind of music, and and you guys are really, really into it. So, so it's it feels really good, really good to get this kind of uh, interviews and contacts and uh, fans, fans contacting me and guys like you and everyone, you know. So thank you, thanks. Thank you and stay stay fucking sick and stay fucking brutal and support this kind of brutal and uh, really sick sick bands as I, I also do and I, I buy I buy I try to buy and trade as many many uh, many recordings and stuff from your your guys countries from Latin America. I, I really enjoy your scene over there. So thanks to everyone. <laughs>